All right, good morning. This is the uh, uh, February 16, 2023 meeting of the uh, Green Bay Housing Authority. Uh, we have a uh, roll call uh, that's been uh, made both physically and electronically. Uh, so item, uh, we'll move on to item C on the agenda, which is approval of the agenda uh, for this February 16, uh, 2023 meeting of the Green Bay Housing Authority. Are there any additions or corrections or modifications? <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second that. Oh, second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second and a couple of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Um, all in favor of approval of the agenda for today's meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item D, approval of the minutes. Uh, so this is approval of the minutes of the December 20, 2022 uh, meeting of the Green Bay Housing Authority. Uh, are there any additions, corrections, or modifications to those minutes that were in your packet? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? I have a motion that. All right. Is there a second? Second. No, we have a second. All right. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of approval of the minutes of the December 20, 2022 uh, meeting of the Housing Authority signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item E, moving on to regular business. Consideration of possible action to approve resolution 2023-01, a resolution authorizing and approving the sale and issuance of student housing revenue bonds, series 2023, uh, University Village Housing Inc. project, and providing certain <laughs> details and connections therewith. <laughs> Sounds very I official. A, I have a formal question on that. Do you still have an uh, do I step in your quorum rules because I'm going to have to abstain from that? Uh, no, you can still abstain have, and it yeah. doesn't affect the quorum. Right, we have three, so we're okay. Yeah, okay. Yep. Okay, so this is, um, if you recall, um, University Village Housing is a project we approved mm -hmm. a while back and then the numbers came in high and it needed to be reworked. So um, the team went back to the drawing board and looked at the bonding and did some work, I think, on the plans. Kelly Franz is here. Um, representing University Village Housing if you have any questions but it's it's pretty much the same project I think there's a there's some fewer units than originally stated I think yeah I mean that we can open the floor yeah and let yep. Kelly do it or I can just speak to it I right. let's open the floor first <laughs> I'll make a motion to open the floor right uh, we have a motion to open the floor and I'll second that motion uh, all in favor of opening the floor signify signify by saying aye aye, aye. Any opposed? Very good motion is, uh, or the floor is open. <laughs> Kelly? Come on up, it? come on up to the table and then we can all see, the other members can see. You <laughs> didn't say that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, last year this was gonna be a 232 bed uh, uh, suite style residence hall and the bids came in extremely high. So in working with the university, it downsized to a 200 bed suite style building and that's where we sit today uh, going forward and uh, uh, should have a contract signed short probably early next week with him on construction to do it. So the quality pretty well stayed intact. The major <coughs> scope change was from 232 beds down to 200 beds. Easy answer as we Lopped a couple sweets off in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a technical term? Yeah, we got it. Yeah, just folded the page really clever. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, sent her through the copy machine and, and build build Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any questions regarding this? Still a great project. Still, you know, getting housing on the students that need it on campus. So. Okay. Um, so you need us to approve the revised resolution. So is right. there a motion to approve the uh, resolution? Bill, I think we've got to close the floor oh, first. Thank you, yes. <laughs> um, first we will uh, motion to close the floor. <laughs> I'll make that motion. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second to close the floor. Thank you very much. 
Uh, it's been a while since this in-person stuff, so I get, I get ahead of myself. Um, we have a motion to close the floor. There's been seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye to close the floor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now we move on to consideration of the resolution that's in your packet. Uh, is there a motion to approve? And I will make um, a motion. Okay, okay. I have a motion. Is there a second? I will second that. All right, motion and a second to approve the resolution authorizing and, and providing for the sale and issuance of student housing revenue bonds, series <coughs> 2023 for the University Village Housing Project. All in favor of that resolution signify by saying aye. <coughs> aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No, to the yes. state. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Item number two on the regular business consideration with possible action on approval of the June 30, 2022 audit report. All right, that was sent out to you in advance um, for your review. Uh, I know you guys had fun and excitement reading it through. Um, Steve said that he, he did cover to cover. Uh, the only thing that is different this year is we did have one finding, and that was due to moving scattered sites out of our GBHA portfolio and into the new portfolio that it was. I did not do that journal entry before the end of the year because I didn't want to have to, if I missed something or if they made changes, it was just better, I thought, to have the auditors make that entry, which then ended up being a large entry to move scattered sites out which just ends up being a finding because it, you know, if we hadn't done that, it would have mat materially misstated our, our um, statements, but we did know that that had to happen anyways. Um, and it won't happen again because I don't think we're moving scattered sites. It was one time action. <laughs> yep. Right, out of the ordinary. Sure. Did anyone have any questions about it? Nope. I think so. Any questions? All right, hearing none, is there a motion to approve? I will motion that. All right, I will second. Uh, any further questions or discussion on the audit? Hearing none, all in favor of a motion to approve, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. I have a question. What are we approving? We're approving just keeping it on file, or what? Like, what are we actually? You know what I'm saying? You have to approve that this that the audit report is correct to the best of your uh, knowledge, and yeah, that you are accepting it. Yeah. Because once you accept it, I can submit it to HUD. Okay. And without your acceptance, I can't submit to HUD, which is due the end of month. All right. <laughs> so, so we're, we're <laughs> recognizing it as yep. factual and our responsibility to it, and that's yes. what we are approving. Okay. Yes. Got it. Got it. Sorry. Yep. Okay. Very good. Uh, moving on to item number three. Consideration with possible action to approve uh, $500,000 in housing authority reserves and $1,356,353 in capital fund funds for the redevelopment of Mason Manor and scattered site properties. So we are moving along with our project, our redevelopment, and uh, our developers at the point of uh, applying for WIDA tax credits. Part of that is we need to have in writing the commitment actually from the housing authority on what we're willing to put into this deal. So since the very beginning we looked at $500,000 of our kind of our um, reserves we call them um, for money paybacks from bonds, um, cell tower, revenue, kind of the weird stuff. Um, if we use $500,000 that will leave us a balance in that account of another $533,000 so we're not emptying it out which is good. Um, and then our capital funds amount, which is the, the federal money allocated to the program, we're basically transferring that over to this project, right? Which is the, like, it's exactly 1,365,353. So the board needs to officially approve that, so then we can draft a letter stating that, which will go with the WIDA packet to apply for the tax credits for the project. Okay. Any questions? Hearing none, I will, uh, is there a motion to approve? A motion to approve. <coughs> I will second I will that. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Item number four under regular business. Consideration of possible action on writing off delinquent tenant accounts effective page. <laughs> February 8, 2023. So that is in your packet. We usually do this um, usually in December or January. We just like to write them out of our system. We do continue to track them and seek payment on them, but it just helps our score with HUD. Okay. I will make that motion. Is there a second? I will second that. Right. We have a motion and a second. Any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Moving on to informational items, GBHA bills. All right, we do have those in your packet. They are for January and December. Um, there's nothing extraordinary about them. If, does anyone have any questions? Oh. All, right. All right. Then moving on to GBHA financial report. Um, that is also in your packet. Um, we're about halfway through the year. We're still doing very well. Um, there's also the CFP report is also in there, which shows the amount that was previously approved. So uh, are there any questions on that? No. Any questions? Hearing none, moving on to the Langman report, which is also in our file. So we have not been, <coughs> excuse me, leasing off any of our Mason Manor sites, sites um, so we can hold those units vacant for um, our relocation inside Mason Manor. So we do not have any applications that were reviewed by Langman, and we do not have any households under investigation. Okay. Hold. Uh, any questions on the Langham report? Hearing none, we move on to the director's report. So I just wanted to um, tell you we're, of course, proceeding along with our RAD redevelopment project. Um, I think the team is not, we actually have an official HUD contact and rep that we are meeting with regularly, which is a great step in moving through the RAD process. We're working on environmental reviews and then our developers working on tax credits um, and getting the financing package together. I think our goal is to close on this project in the summer, right? September 1st. September, September 1st, and then hopefully break on this year yet. So things are actually <coughs> forward, which is great. Um, I also wanted to bring up at um, Council, the ERC, the Equal Rights Commission, uh, provided a list of recommendations to City Council that um, staff will be working on, um, where the goal is to, I think, put a, a team together of landlords and tenants and kind of brainstorm ways to make um, tenants, um, more educate tenants on their rights, educate landlords on you know how to do things properly. There was a number of recommendations um, really kind of geared towards tenants mostly, right, and how to make sure that they are um, understanding their rights for fair housing and tenants, um, tenant advocacy. They'd like us to, part of the report talks about, you know, trying to prioritize affordable housing development, something that the city is very much aware of and working on affordable housing. Um, there's a kind of a whole list of things here. But we'll be presenting this um, a kind of refer to staff at Protection and Policy. So we'll be working towards doing more of that outreach um, and proactive work with landlords and tenants coming up in the future. Um, and then we have, you remember, um, the City East development is the one on East Walnut. Mm -hmm. It's um, the WIDA tax credit project. There actually is going to be a, yep, uh, towards East High, it's that black. There's going to be a um, press conference uh, with uh, the partners reporting out on the progress of the uh, announcement of who the partners are. And that's going to be Thursday, February 23rd at 1.30. When I, once they release that at press, which is going to happen soon, I'll send that out all your board members if you okay. want to attend that it, it's going to be right here in city hall so other than that you got anything nope um, <coughs> you know we haven't in in the past you know there i recall there were studies of you know, the affordable housing mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. I mean, any any changes in any of that that you were aware of any projects that are 
maybe you could talk about that might be on the horizon? You know, I think some of it has to do, like, when looking at the housing study, first of all, the housing study, of course, said Green Bay needs them all. We need market, we need middle, we need affordable. So we need to be building all units. So, um, of course, I think the greatest need is affordable. But some of the things I know our planners are working on are, are looking at potential zoning changes within the city, for example. We're about to start our comprehensive plan, mm -hmm. our 20-year comprehensive plan. So is, is there a way we can look at zoning that would make um, the building of multifamily easier? Ones or twos or, or those types of things. Uh, and, you know, we have a pool of funding to assist developers that came out of the housing study. It's like trying to fill that gap. So regardless of the development now, whether it's market or affordable, there's a gap due to contractors and pricing of materials and whatnot. So we have some affordable money that was allocated through ARPA that we can make available to developers. We have our TADA, our tax increment district. Financing will have held that tax district open in the years. Okay. Yeah, so that money. Um, and then we also have some home dollars um, that are available. So, you know, I think part of that housing study is trying to really create more affordable housing. Sure. And sure. So we're trying to help with that with subsidizing those. Great. That's awesome. That's good. Good. This advocacy group is asking you to present what? I'm sorry, can you, can you give me that again? What, what is this and, and, and how are we participating? The Equal Rights Commission is like an advisory commission of the city council. Okay. And they drafted a report. They, they went out and did a number of listening sessions in the community yeah. and heard stories about whatever it might be um, with regards to um, tenancy, fair housing, those types of things. And the vice chair of that committee drafted a report um, along with, I think, the board it's a big report that they okay. put together basically talking about kind of the history of Green Bay and the things that came out of those listening sessions and they made a series of recommendations then to the city um, on things that they think we should do to help that um, I think at the council meeting one of the issues was that they really were based on ten tenant mm -hmm. uh, more tenant based and not so much land. they didn't have landlord involvement yeah. at that high level end. so I think some of the comments at council were like well we need to get the landlords involved <coughs> mm -hmm. so the recommendation was really to form kind of a housing task force as a result of this ERC recommendation right. where we would get these people advocates together from all over really and say hey what can we do together to make it right better for tenants to rent educate them on what happens if there's fair housing claims or if landlords are doing things illegally um, landlords what can we do to help you know you rent to good people and you know yeah. I think more of that dialogue happening yeah. at that housing task force so okay. um, it's very early stages we haven't created the task force yet we have it we're just kind of looking at the recommendations and then we're bring that to protection of policy I think yeah. With the with like we need to look at a bigger picture. I think. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Well, again, if there's anything from our end that we can do to yeah. assistance, uh, I wonder if we need to like champion some of these findings, right? Yeah. Help put together a report on what to do and how to do both this. Let me email. I'll email that to you. Okay. The ERC I'd, report. Yeah, I'd be interested to see it. Yeah. You know, some of the things. I mean, we're looking through it. Just as a staff person. There are some things I don't see the city doing. That you know, there was a recommendation, for example, that um, the there should be a fund set up for, it, like, if a landlord doesn't make repairs on the inside of a building, that the city could come in and make those repairs and then bill that landlord back. That that would be extremely difficult, I think, yeah, to do. And I'm not sure. You know what I mean? That's where I think we'd want some landlord input with regards to like what those issues are. Yeah, you know I, I guess I, <coughs> what I'm driving at is if we have policy in place that we need to take a new look at because it's something that an entity we're affiliated with is publishing. Are we doing all of the things <coughs> that they are saying that should right. be done? Or, you know, like right. that, that cross check on the yep. services we can offer. And walk that's, around. you know, one of the, there's a couple of things we're looking at. Uh, one of them is just beefing up our website. Like we, uh, we already contract with Mo, uh, Milwaukee Fair Housing Council to provide fair housing services in Green Bay. <coughs> Maybe we, you know, we need to beef up our website so that information is out there better, more accessible. <coughs> get that information out to people that might need that. But some of that stuff is easy to do. It's just a matter of us doing a better job in marketing or getting mm -hmm. the information out to the proper people. Um, so, but there's there's a number of them on there that 
I think we're doing in some capacity, but we could probably do a better job at them. You know, city land trust is one of them. Yeah. We should be looking at land trusts. Well, we've already met on that with some of our nonprofits to awesome. figure out how we can do a community land right. trust. Mm -hmm. So, there's a number of different things, but I'll ship this out to you. you can oh, great, take thank you. Well, Any further questions uh, regarding the director's report? Hearing right. none, moving on to occupancy report. Okay, that is also <coughs> excuse me, in your packet. So come March 1st, we will tentatively have around 25 vacancies. Um, all of our vacancies are HUD approval, so they do not affect our operating um, dollars that we receive in. And we will continue to hold units open until our building remodel starts. So. I think the goal is two floors. Yep. Yes. Um, but even if they can get a floor and a half, then they can start from the top and work down. So tw okay. yeah, there's 21 per floor. Um, so we got about a floor and a quarter right now, so. <coughs> okay. Um, no, anybody have any questions? Well, we're also gonna be having some tenant meetings as well. Yes. Um, so we keep the tenants, you know, informed about how this is gonna work. Yes. And that's very important to know that when those moves take place, it's not gonna cost any money they're not going to have to move them right? Yeah. We're going to make that as easy as possible. Expectations, so yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. good yeah. timing. Yes. Yep. Um, any um, more COVID, uh, other issues, health issues floating around with uh, Mason Manor? Um, we don't have any COVID, but we have had a handful of unexpected deaths, so. Um, okay. RSV has been nasty yes <laughs> sometimes worse than COVID for some people I think yeah. so yeah yeah, yeah that's what I'm just kind of curious about it yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think our numbers have been pretty low about coming this is good sorry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think people are more aware of it right mm -hmm. yeah. 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 since the beginning of this year we haven't <laughs> had anyone sure that they have COVID and oh. needs to quarantine so are we still, um, you know, still have any COVID-related programs running at Mason Manor? Um, you know, I think we're testing? up to date on all of the COVID booster shots. Um, yes. Struz would come in and host like a pharmacy yeah. for every mm -hmm. the initial and then all the boosters, and I'm pretty sure we're up to date on all the okay. boosters, and then they came in and did the flu shots as well for our tenants. So yeah. That's great. Excellent. So, <coughs> tax prep is next, so that's in my Great. All right. All right, looks like we are closing out here. Um, uh, date for the next meeting is March 16th, uh, 2023. Uh, any further questions before we move to adjournment? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn the GBHA meeting? I will motion that. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned and we are moving on to the next meeting.